Start talking. Hi, Ken. Hey, I'm Ken Jordan. I'm the owner of Accent American Cleaning and Disaster Restoration. I've been in business since 1985. I am a certified master cleaner, a master restorer. I'm a senior carpet and flooring inspector. I'm at the non-practicing status. I'm a state licensed mold remediator. Um, I do a lot of restoration and a lot of cleaning. And as a mold remediator, I got really interested in protocols telling me to rip carpet out. So I've done a lot, a lot of research. And what I'm telling you is out there. Uh, carpets have gotten a bad name and they've been blamed for allergies and causing all these problems when the complete opposite is true. Because a carpet is the biggest filter in your house. And here's some data you need to take away from this. You can buy whatever flooring you want, but know the pros and cons of all the flooring. <clears throat> a human being sheds 300,000 skin cells a day. That's approximately 40 pounds a year. The dust mite eats the dead skin. Now, if you have a carpet, the fecal matter from the dust mite has a, a, a DLP protein that affects 95% of the U.S. population, but it's trapped in the carpet. It can't float. Uh, no matter how much you beat it, if you've ever beat a rug with a tennis racket, you, you will see you cannot get all the dirt out of it. That's because of Van der Waals law of magnetic forces. The carpet is such a good filter that actually when we did the CRI testing uh, to come in at the bronze level, we had to vacuum a carpet at a high setting just to tickle the fibers to get the sand and dirt out 11 times just to remove 56% of the soil. So yes, the carpet is dirty, but guess what? The air over the carpet's cleaner. Here's some data for you. I can go into a home with a particular counter in a spotless home that has, say, tile or wood and carpet, fire up my particular counter at four and a half feet because dust floats at four and a half feet, 52 inches. The average breathing zone of a woman or child, which, by the way, makes up 90% of algae patients. I can measure the air, let's say, over the kitchen, and the air on that floor will be 10 to 1,800 times more contaminated than the air over that carpet. And that's the dust mite fecal matter floating in the breathing zone of an average woman or child. Now, if you've ever sitting down in someone's house and you see dust with the naked eye, that's regular household dust. That's big. Dust mite fecal matter is so small that at the end of a period on a sentence, whenever you read and see a period, think 16 dust mites fit in that period. That's how small the dust mite is. Now think how small their fecal matter is. And then when it floats continually, now you're inhaling it. So would you rather have the filter on the floor holding it or would you rather have it in your breathing zone? Okay, if you are a fan of hard floors, I would say, okay, are you prepared to clean it daily, constantly? Damp mop, a true HEPA vacuum, not a high efficiency vacuum because if I put the particulate counter on the exhaust motor, I'm throwing about 300,000 particulates out per second. Because carpet cleans were taken off the market, it started around 94. Duck cleaning is now a booming business. So carpets have gotten an unrealistic blame for something because they're dirty and nasty. My wife came up with the best analogy I ever heard of too, because people, oh my God, my carpet's mold. Have you ever put leftovers in a Tupperware dish? They somehow got pushed to the back of the refrigerator. You found them a month later and it was all molded. Is it the Tupperware's fault? See, carpets are plastic. They're made from oil. Some carpets have more oil, some have less oil. But the Tupperware is not the reason. Carpets can't mold. The fiber is synthetic. The back is synthetic. The adhesive is synthetic. The chalk filler is synthetic. But can a carpet get really dirty and saturated and full of crud? Yes, that can mold. Just like your shower, your dead skin, and your soap can mold. So people need to understand the data here. Now, when your allergy doctor and all medical professionals specialize in human physiology. So I have an issue with a medical doctor making a flooring emission science decision. I've been in court on this and I've really ticked some of them off. That's not the area of expertise, just like I am not qualified to give you medical advice. Someone, I see mold in the house, I can't say it's mold. I gotta have a test to tell me what type of mold it is. Then if I know the mold, then I can say, go see this specialist, tell him you've been exposed to this. So yes, get what flooring you like, but carpet has gotten a bad rap, all right? Carpet, it's like if you drive your car without an air filter, how long do you think your engine would last? When you pull up a carpet and you see how dirty it is, that's because it's a filter. You take, lift the carpet, of course it's dirty. A brand new carpet's gonna have stuff in it. But when you do an air sample over the carpet, the air's cleaner. 
So I challenge you, which air would you rather breathe? Are you like cleaning every day? Are you OCD? Get your towel or wood. Okay, can you hire a full-time maid? Get your towel or wood. If you're not prepared to clean that stuff, just go over your horizontal surfaces, your window frame, your door frame, your pictures, and see what you get on your hand. That's dead skin. That's 90% dead skin. So now you got the facts, so make a decision based on facts. That's, that's wonderful, Ken. Yeah. Um, could you be willing to share with us a little bit about your experience uh, with uh, our new lifeguard products in the uh, pet proof factory? Yes, I actually just spent about $11,000. The carpet's not super expensive. I just have a really big house, <laughs> okay? And I got the lifeguard carpet because my wife and I do animal rescue. And I had a carpet in my home, and they have accidents, and they urinate. And my own carpet, it lasted. I would clean it every three months. I had no wear patterns, anything like that. And when I pulled up my carpet, there was no dirt on the floor. You know, I cleaned it very well and took good care of it. But I got tired of, I had 30 different uh, times I had to do what's called a urine decontamination, where you purposely flood the carpet and you suck the urine out through the pad. The backing on this lifeguard is a special backing and it will prevent the urine from getting to the pad. Cause when you do animal rescue, or you have any types of pets, they're gonna pee, they're gonna poop, they're gonna vomit, they're gonna wallow, they're gonna rub, they're gonna do all that. This is the best carpet for you, especially property managers, uh, nursing homes, facilities that are going to have these issues. It's clean. Right now, I got a little portable I carry around, a little spotting tool, and all I do is rinse it with water. I mean, everything's coming up. I'm not having to use any detergencies or anything like that. I ordered a 55-ounce carpet, and the ironic thing is we have a Dyson vacuum, and it won't move. <laughs> Literally, my wife called Dyson, and it says it's too thick, it's too plush it won't move at all. So I love the carpet. It's a phenomenal carpet, it's plush. And the reason I have carpet, I'm in the industry. I, I do, like I said, mold, crime scene. I do all these cleanings and I'm hands on. And the last thing I wanna do is come home and mop my floor every day. You know, I do have tile in the kitchen. I do have tile in the bathrooms. I got a little dance floor by the bar, but everything else is carpet. And besides, I don't want my house to echo like a cave. I like watching my big screen TV and I want something to absorb the sound, just like the carpet in this ballroom. Imagine right now, if we had a hard floor, you couldn't hear me. Both floors have their benefits, but I want you to understand the pros and cons of both floors, and don't let anybody ever tell you, oh my God, we gotta rip the carpet out, my doctor told me so. I wouldn't ask the doctor how to fix my brake system or my fuel injection system. Well, how am I gonna ask him what type of flooring to put in my house? No disrespect to you doctors out there, but stick to medical. That's what you specialize in. <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> Ken, if you could just uh, wrap up with uh, your thoughts on you know, Shaw uh, Floors and Shaw Total Care investing into the professional cleaning industry and your, and your thoughts on that and what that means to you. Uh, I think Sean said it pretty much the best. Shaw is where a lot of other mills want to dictate to us what to do. I have a, it's like in the mold industry when an assessor tries to write a protocol to me and they've never worked on a mold job. You're trying to, uh, have you been in the field? Do you know what the, you guys actually come out, you guys, you're right here, you're at our conventions, you're at our trade shows, you see what we do, you know what we do, you listen to what our concerns are and then you go back and you try to make something and create something and we can work hand in hand. You guys are working hand in hand with us and you're not trying to make a product that's gonna fall apart in 10 years just to get them to, to buy a new product. You're trying to make a product to last and with us, we wanna educate them on how to keep it lasting. Like I said, professional carpet cleaning every 12 to 18 months because it's the sand and the dirt that wears a carpet, not your soda, okay? Or not your dog vomit, it doesn't wear it. And you're coming up with some phenomenally stain resistant stuff and some of the technologies you guys got out there is basically beyond what I've seen when I was a practicing inspector. The stuff you're doing with, uh, with the polyesters and the softness, it's, it, it's amazing. And um, uh, there, there's some other polyesters out there in the field that I've worked with. And I've seen a problem with those polyesters is they have good stain resistance for water-based stains, but they're bad for oil. And with dog oils, they're really hard to get out. We have to go back and do a different process. And they're not wearing very, very well. 
And uh, like Sean says, you got a product that he, he threw everything at it and tried to get it to untwist, and he couldn't do that. And normally with some of these products, that doesn't happen. So yeah, you guys are the leaders in the industry. And you, and you, and I, you know, and you force your warranties and, and you, you, you network with us and the pro true professional cleaners, the IICRC cleaners. And public, the only certification that's relevant in a court of law is IICRC. So whenever it sues you, there's no other certification out there. Companies can't create their own certifications. Remember that. Certifiedcleaners.org, hire a certified professional to clean your carpets with hot water extraction, which is part of your warranty. But, but yes, you guys, hands down, I mean, you're with us. And you've been with us ever since I've been involved. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, in closing, any other comments you'd like to share with us? Just feel free to uh, share. Yeah, I, I just, people hire, when you, when, you, when you hire a carpet cleaner and you go look, look at their credentials and how long they've been in business under that name. You would, there, there's a reason you want hot water extraction because listen, nothing is clean until it's rinsed, okay? Some franchises out there will squirt soapy water in and leave a soapy residue behind. Your carpets get dirtier faster. A professional cleaner will pre-vacuum, pre-treat, and then rinse. Just like you take a shower, you lather up and you rinse. You don't rinse with soapy water. Okay, so there is a difference. And that's why, you know, before you hire any cleaner, make sure they're IICRC certified. No other certification exists there. And don't wait till your carpets look dirty. Your warranty says clean every 12 to 18 months. And vacuum at a higher setting. Put a quarter in front of your vacuum and if you're bar adjust, adjust it so the quarter vibrates. This is very important because now you're tickling the fiber. You're shaking off the sand and the dirt and you're allowing the airflow to pull more out. If you're low, you're beating the fiber. You end up beating the dirt down and you try to untwist the fibers. And that's why when you pull up a carpet and pad, you have buckets of dirt on the floor. Just because you don't see it doesn't mean it's not, gone, not there. So yeah, vacuum your carpets, probably you know, heavy traffic areas at least three times a week and clean every 12 to 18 months. You can clean more as long as it's hot water extraction.